My father left my family when I was two years old. And I was raised by a single mom who had to work and who struggled at times to pay the bills and wasn't always able to give us the things that other kids had. There were times when I missed having a father in my life. There were times when I was lonely and I felt like I didn't fit in. So I wasn't always as focused as I should have been on school. And I did some things that I'm not proud of. And I got in more trouble than I should have. And my life could have easily taken a turn for the worse. But I was, I was lucky. I got a lot of second chances. And I had the opportunity to go to college and law school and follow my dreams. I chose to run for president at this moment in history because I believe deeply that we cannot solve the challenges of our time unless we solve them together. We may have different stories, but we hold common hopes. We may not look the same and may not have come from the same place, but we all want to move in the same direction towards a better future for our children and our grandchildren. And this belief comes from my unyielding faith in the decency and generosity, but it also comes from my own story. I am the son of a black man from Kenya and a white woman from Kansas. I was raised with the help of a white grandfather who survived the Depression to serve in Patton's army during World War II, and a wild white grandmother who worked on a bomber assembly line at Fort Leavenworth while he was overseas. I've gone to some of the best schools in America, and I've lived in one of the world's poorest nations. I am married to a black American who carries within her the blood of slaves and slave owners. I have brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, uncles, and cousins of every race and every hue scattered across three continents. And for as long as I live, I will never forget that in no other country on earth is my story even possible. Each time we gather to inaugurate a president, we bear witness to the enduring strength of our Constitution. We recall that what binds this nation together is not the colors of our skin or the tenets of our faith or the origins of our names. What makes us exceptional is our allegiance to an idea articulated in a declaration made more than two centuries ago. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is not to say that race has not been an issue in this campaign. At various stages in the campaign, some commentators have deemed me either too black or not black enough. We saw racial tensions bubble to the surface. Against all predictions to the contrary, Today, we continue a never-ending journey to bridge the meaning of those words with the realities of our time. For history tells us that while these truths may be self-evident, they have never been self-executing. That while freedom is a gift from God, it must be secured by His people here on earth through blood drawn by lash and blood drawn by sword, we learned that no union founded on the principles of liberty and equality could survive half slave and half free. We made ourselves anew and vowed to move forward together. Together we determined that a modern economy requires railroads and highways to speed travel and commerce, schools and colleges to train our workers, Together, we discovered that a free market only thrives when there are rules to ensure competition and fair play. Together, we resolved that a great nation must care for the vulnerable and protect its people from life's worst hazards and misfortune. We have always understood that when times change, so must we. That fidelity to our founding principles requires new responses to new challenges that preserving our individual freedoms ultimately requires collective action. Now, more than ever, we must do these things together as one nation and one people. For we, the people, 
Understand that our country cannot succeed when a shrinking few do very well and a growing many barely make it. We know that thrives when every person can find independence and pride in their work. When the wages of honest labor liberate families from the brink of hardship, we are true to our creed when a little girl born into the bleakest poverty knows that she has the same chance to succeed as anybody else because she is free and she is equal, not just in the eyes of God, but also in our own. We, the people, still believe that every citizen deserves a basic measure of security and dignity. But we reject the belief that must choose between caring for the generation that built this country and investing in the generation that will build its future. We do not believe that in this country freedom is reserved for the lucky or happiness for the few. We recognize that no matter how responsibly we live our lives, any one of us, at any time, may face a job loss or a sudden illness or a home swept away in a terrible storm. The commitments we make to each other through Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security, these things do not sap our initiative, they strengthen us. And we must be a source of hope to the poor, the sick, the marginalized, the victims of prejudice. Not out of mere charity, but because peace in our time requires the constant advance of those principles that our common creed describes. Tolerance and opportunity, human dignity and justice. We, the people, declare today that the most evident of truths, that all of us are created equal. It is now our generation's task to carry on what those pioneers began. For our journey is not complete until our wives, our mothers and daughters can earn a living equal to their efforts. For if we are truly created equal, then surely the love we commit to one another must be equal as well. Our journey is not complete until all our children know that they are cared for and cherished and always safe from harm. That is our generation's task, to make these words, these rights, these values of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. For now, decisions are upon us and we cannot afford delay. We cannot mistake absolutism for principle. We must act. My oath is not so different from the pledge we all make to the flag that waves above and that fills our hearts with pride. They are the words of citizens and they represent our greatest hope. You and I as citizens have the power to set this country's course. You and I as citizens have the obligation to shape the debates of our time, not only with the votes we cast, but with the voices we lift in defense of our most ancient values and enduring ideals. Let us each of us now embrace with solemn duty and awesome joy what is our lasting birthright. What gives me the most hope is the next generation, the young people whose attitudes and beliefs and openness to change have already made history with common effort and common purpose, with passion and dedication, let us answer the call of history and carry into an uncertain future that precious light of freedom. To hear a king proclaim that our individual freedom is inextricably bound to the freedom of every soul on earth. In the end then, what is called for is nothing more and nothing less than what all the world's great religions demand, that we do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Let us be our brother's keeper, scripture tells us. Let us be our sister's keeper. Let us find that common stake we all have in one another and let our politics reflect that spirit as well. Thank you, God bless you. And may he forever bless our citizens, 